Hello everyone, my name is Jim Garrity and this is a rim latch. This is the bit that keeps the door closed. It supports the door handles and the slide bolt and it allows us to open and close the door as well. This is the bit that keeps the door closed. It supports the door handle and it allows us to open and close the door. We're refurbishing a hundred year old door to fit into our bathroom. It's the subject of its own video and if you're interested in that its uh, name is Antique Bathroom Door. It's a brilliant bit of cinematography if I say so myself but unfortunately overlooked by the selection committees for Oscars or Golden Globes. Anyway I digress, let's get on with our rim latch story. This is the rim latch that we took from the door which we're refurbishing to go into the bathroom. It's an old lock as one would expect since it's come from a door which is 100 years old there's multiple layers of paint all over it. There is a slide bolt that comes out and I want to use this again in the bathroom so when people go in they can then lock the door behind them. Uh, you can see there's a lot of paint around here. This bolt has not locked a door in an awful long time. Let's have a look on the other side of the latch plate and see what we have. Right we have some very old looking paint here. The paint's actually all scrunched up with age. Uh, we have a single screw which must hold the back in position. Let's uh, undo that. We have a look at the mechanism inside. That screw's quite loose. And there is a screw. It's a dome top countersunk. And with paint, so it must come through the front face. It's got paint on it, or it has paint on the thread. Now let's have a look at underneath the, uh, the top. So off with the top, and we turn it over and oh look at that, we have an x-ray. We have an x-ray of the bits inside. Let's just move this rim latch down a little. Oh, look at that, you can see the this is a spring along here and here's the uh, uh, the x-ray of it. Where it, it, must have, it must touch the outside and that pin there has been touching it and you can see where the rust uh, has come around. There's two lines which are here and those two lines are generated by that which is a washer that keeps that sliding bolt pushed against the front face. Hmm, let's have a look at the other bits inside here. Now inside the latch we need a mechanism for holding the, the door closed and that will be the, uh, the latch bolt or the latch tongue which is this piece here. So that is held onto this piece of plate with a pin just there and um, that plate is on the pin which is there. So the spindle for the handle, for the door handle, goes through here. So when you turn the door handle this part turns. Now this is called the, the knob hub or the knob follower and uh, no matter which way you turn it either that lug will push against here or that lug will push against there. Either way what they do is push this plate away like that. It turns about that shaft and as it turns about that shaft it pulls the latch in which un enables you to unlock the door. This other pin is for holding the spring, or in fact springs, there's two springs there. If I push this up there's one spring there and then uh, two. And it's amazing how, how strong they still are after all these years. There's, you know, that's had a preload on for a hundred years and it's still quite springy, you don't have to replace them. Um, anyway, so, uh, oh, and that, there's a gap there with the hole, that's where the the screw came through which held the uh, the top on. <laughs> so that's got a little slot there to miss it, so when this plate moves it doesn't bump against the securing screw for the rear. That is the uh, the slide bolt uh, with its spring, we spoke about this before, that's all held in place at the moment with with paint. One other thing we need to talk about is the wear within the uh, the latch. The, the hub, this knob hub turns or backwards and forwards so this surface will wear against here and uh, it also wears on the other side. Now if I turn this latch over, in fact let's put the screw in. So I'll now turn the latch over and you will notice that the, the latch hub against this plate has a lot of slack. Do you see that all the wear? And the reason that is is because this handle 
fits right above it and it goes on the shaft so as as the handle is turned every time the weight of that handle and the hand that's on it pushes this against there now this is a steel plate that makes up the chassis of the lock that is a casting of some monkey metal i'm not sure what that is uh, but there is a brass washer here which has been I don't, i'm not sure if it's been riveted in position or soldered but that's i think is there as a bearing for this but over the years it has worn quite a lot because there's no support for the handle that is the support if we look at the handle i just bring the latch down here this is the the handle from that door now you see that there's actually two handles of course because you need one each side of the door on a spindle and the spindle is square now historically uh, the the old size for these in the UK used to be 19 sixtyfourths a nice imperial measurement there though so a 19 sixtyfourth square why 19 sixtyfourths I have no idea it's not really a round number is it uh, and this is 19 sixtyfourths and uh, the equivalent of that in metric is 7.6 uh, millimeters each handle is held on with one screw there's one screw there and there's another screw just there now the spindle comes through the knob hub and uh, the handle sits on top of this ring here so as all the weight goes down it wears against there there's nothing to hold it let's have a closer look at the two knobs and the knob spindle and also the rows now you notice that the screw that holds it on if I start unscrewing this you see it's quite a fine thread and you think a fine thread going into wood that can't be right because that's going to strip but these wooden knobs are actually on a brass shaft now if I take this screw out the first thing you notice is that it's not threaded all the way down it has a dog dog point and a slotted head so that's the screw so it screws into the hub itself but not into the shaft what happens on the shaft you see the heart the shaft has a hole in it so as this screws into the knob and if captive within the knob it then fits inside that hole and holds the the knob on the shaft there's the inside of the handle or the inside face of the handle and you can see here the brass piece and that brass rubs up against the uh the rear sorry against the front of the plate if i turn the plate over you can see where this wear has happened here and that wear is there because the back of the knob the brass part, brass part of the knob has been rubbing against it and uh, it must wear against the top left hand side of that brass washer because the bottom right has got no wear at all isn't that amazing anyway we don't want this rattling around because that's what it's going to do at the moment if i put this handle through and now hmm, look, look how much slack we've got there so I'm thinking that uh, if I hold let's hold both of these yeah I think that may have a little bit too much slack so I might have to look into doing something there so let's take this rim latch to pieces we have the knob hub first or the knob follower uh, that comes out uh, the next thing will be the spring or the springs and let's see how they should come out fairly easy I'm still impressed how springy they are look how far they spring to all that pent-up energy this will be the latch bolt or the latch tongue depending which name you want to use the next is this plate here that just comes up and it sits on that that pin there now the last thing to come out is oh the spring first we've got the spring for this sliding bolt and now a little hammer and there you go that's all it needed just a simple tap and look at that it's moving let's turn this over with pieces of paint oh and loads of muck has fallen out of it so if we bring this up we should be able to get that out now 
and we have and there is that sliding latch and they are all the pieces out of our uh, our rim latch Ta -da! just like that I want to get rid of all the paint now from the the lock case and also the backing plate and I've bought some paint stripper this is Polycell paint stripper strips paint or varnish in one application on wood and metal I think we've got no wood on here but we've got metal and it does say it's uh, it will work best if you abrade the surface slightly so what I'm going to do is uh, I have a scriber I'm just going to scratch through some of the paint now I don't want to scratch the surface of the metal but I, no, I want to make sure that the the paint comes off so I'm just going to do some scratches like this and hopefully that will help with the uh, with the chemicals getting in there and, uh, and melt in the paint once the surface of the paint is scratched all over I start to apply the stripper a nice thick layer I paint the stripper onto the case first then do the same with the back plate the instructions on the tub say you have to leave the chemicals on for at least 20 minutes before the paint starts to come away. I check it after 20 minutes. The paint is soft, but not all over. I leave it for a further 50 minutes. It's now been an hour and 10 minutes since the paint stripper went on. And uh, let's see what's happened. We can scrape it off and... Mm. Well, this definitely has... Uh, that's paint coming off it Whew. and the smell of um, pear drops is back as well some of the paint is still on the surfaces I used a one of these green scotch bright pads to to scrub it down as I was uh, as I was washing it off under the tap um, but you can see the the inside was okay there wasn't much paint on that to start off with um, but what was there has gone except for the, the corners I'm going to have a good scrape of this uh, in a moment the top or the, the back of the um, uh, the lock or the latch is you can see it was going it was soft and where I've scraped it it started to come away then as I started to wash it, it seemed to have hardened up anyway I'm going to get to this now with some wire wool and uh, let's see if that cleans up the surface the paint didn't want to come off very easily, so I've uh, I've put it in the vise. I use the heat gun as it starts to warm up. Then the paint comes off fairly easy. Uh, you can see the front now is fairly clean. I've got to go over it with wire wool, I think, just to uh, polish it up. And uh, I'll get to the rest of the the case. So heat it up with the heat gun as I'm using the um, uh, the wire brush, and that seems to clear the paint. Right, I'll carry on. All the parts of the rim latch have now been cleaned. All the internal parts are in this tub. Let's push that away and have a look at the housing of the lock. The lock is actually made by Union. You can see the manufacturer's name is just there. U-N-I-O-N, Union. I first saw this on the inside and I was trying to work out what it said or what, what the picture was. because you, you can't see it, but of course it's backwards on the inside. And uh, it, it did actually dawn on me, but it took a while. Now, all you see, all the paint has, uh, has gone. Underneath that household white paint, uh, or rather yellow paint, uh, was black. It could even have been that old crinkle finish paint. But anyway, all that's, all that, that's gone. The black that you see is the, the oxide on the metal. I think it must have been black to, uh, to start off with before it was painted. Now, I'm, I'm leaving that on there. I've gone over this with wire wool and made it shiny in places on purpose and the reason I did that is because I want to keep it looking like this and then varnish over the top of it and that will make it look an old lock which is what it is I could go over this with um, with wire wall and uh, emery cloth and make it all nice and shiny but I don't think it would look so nice so the idea now is to try and make it look his age <coughs> excuse me okay let's uh Let's do a dry fit. We're going to put it all together. I'm not going to use any lubricant because it's coming apart again. I'm just interested to see uh, what it looks like. First thing we put in is this. This is the, uh, the sliding bolt. It turned out to be a brass casting. 
and that's cleaned up quite nicely and that fits in the housing just there in that slot and now you see it goes backwards and forwards nice and easy that's the part that was painted in before yeah so that goes in the next thing to go on is the operation plate so now it has a fulcrum point just there so that's what it turns on and there's this other pin here so we've got three pins that pin is a fulcrum point of this plate that is a pin which is connected to the to the case and that pin is connected to this operation lever and it's between those three pins that the the spring acts before we get to the spring let's have a look at the the knob hub or the knob follower which is this piece here now this is quite interesting because if you notice it has it has these two lugs sticking out and this lug is longer than that lug so keep that in mind and now on this operating plate when the handle is turned clockwise this handle follower turns clockwise and that shorter lug pushes against that plate there if you turn the knob anti-clockwise then the longer plate pushes against that lug there now when the spring is in place this is being pushed in that direction through the action of the spring here if I want to push this plate here it's easier to push at that point than it is at that point because this point is further from the fulcrum point so if it's further away you've got more leverage and a better mechanical advantage so it's easier to push the plate there than what it is here now going back to this this knob its fulcrum is in its center and when you turn it clockwise that has a, a better mechanical advantage because it's shorter it's closer to the the center and this one has a less mechanical advantage because it's further to the center so by having the longer lug here it takes more effort to push it but the plate uses less force at this point because it's got a better mechanical advantage so what this is for is so when you turn the handle either clockwise or anti-clockwise these mechanical advantages and disadvantages add together and it means that it it gives more of a an even turn so if you turn it one way or the other it feels the same yes very clever and uh, i hope you understood that And now we have a complete lock. Ta da! So that's the sliding latch that works. And if I turn that with the handle shaft, that would bring the bolt backwards and forwards. So it's all working, it's all cleaned up. I want to look at the wear between the hub follower and this brass plate on the front of the, uh, the latch. You can see there's quite a lot of slack in here and it means that the knob rattles quite a lot and what I'm thinking of doing is uh, is replacing this not quite sure how to do it yet um, this I thought was monkey metal to start off with but it actually turns out to be um, uh, to be cast iron anyway so that is a, a hard piece of um, of iron cast iron and this surface here that diameter there is the one that goes inside here now uh, i know this is going to be an imperial size but i generally work in in metrics so i'm going to work in metric on here and uh, you'll notice that we've got 14.39 14.37 14.34 so it's all 14.3 millimeters in diameter but it's the same diameter all the way around so it hasn't I don't think it's worn very much if it has worn then it's worn very cylindrical and when we look at the other side we're 14.4 14.45.43.45 so again I think that is the the correct diameter of the the knob hub and the thing that's worn are the brass plates on the front and the back 
of the latch. So what I need to do is replace these. Now, if you look underneath, you can see this, these slight indentations, and that's there uh, because I think what's happened is they, the ring is put in from this side with two lugs that stick out, and then it's crushed. So this is riveted in. In effect, I don't think it's been soldered. I've been looking around the edge here, uh, but I can't I can't see any solder here or around the edge here. Uh, so I think it's just a, a rivet finish. So what I need to do is remove these and replace them with something else. Now I don't want to heat this up, so whatever I put in, I'm going to have to rivet back in place. And the reason I don't want to heat it up is if I heat it up with a lamp, then I'm going to get tempering colours on here, and that will mess up my uh, my patina. We're looking at the back plate here of the latch, with its uh, brass bearing there for the uh, the knob hub. If I put it into this vice here and tighten the vice up, I've been trying to think of a way of working out if it's if this brass ring is soldered in position as well as being uh, riveted with those two um, patches behind. If I if I put it in this vise and now put a screwdriver through the hole and now flex this, can you see just there the ring rises up from the surface? Of the metal. So that proves to me that this ring isn't soldered onto here. So all I need to do is address those two places underneath here. There's one each side of this screwdriver and uh, they should be the only places that hold that ring in. Now you see here these are the the two tags that have been squashed down and there are, there's a little <clears throat> a hole pattern here which is uh, from the other side of the vise where it's come down and, and squashed it together and those little holes are repeated over here as well so the whole of this surface uh, has been squished. I assume it was squished onto a flat surface on this side because there's no pattern pattern here. So if that's been squished perhaps what I ought to do is just file these raised sections off. Let's see what happens there. Right, I need a bit of wood in the vise. There's wood. I've, keep, I've got a stack of wood which I keep at the back of the uh, the desk here. And uh, this is my favourite bit. I started using this, look, in 2008. That's like 18 years ago now. What I'm using it for here is just to hold the back plate and the back plate's against that side of the vise. Because what I want to do is use this cold chisel and try and knock off the squashed piece of the bearing that's on this plate. Right, I have a centre punch here. So I'm just going to tap the centre with a centre punch. I'm hoping that those centre dots will give the the chisel some purchase. I've gone quite deep. I'm down a couple of millimetres and I'm still in brass. So I think this must be a rectangular keyway going right the way through. I think we'll try and give it another another twist. And it has gone. And there we go. Anyway, that's that one out. We now got to do the uh, we now got to address this one here. And now I know how it looks. Ta da! I should be able to get this one out with no problem. And did that second bush just pop out? Well, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to wait for the next video. Hmm. I'm only joking. Yes, it did pop out. Oh, I should have said spoiler alert. I'm sorry if I've spoiled it for anyone.
Uh, I made two new bushes on the lathe, which is just behind me here, and fitted them into the rim latch body. It really, really is a must not miss episode. You've got to see it. If you've just found this video and you wondered where the rim latch came from, search my videos for antique bathroom door, and then you'll find a hundred year old door that's being refurbished to fit into our bathroom. That's where the latch came from, and that's where the latch is going to go back to. Now then, could you do something like this? Of course you can. Take care everyone, I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.